Assalamu alaikum and good evening. Weir's special court has indicted Parvez Musharraf on five counts on the high treason case, which were all denied by Parvez Musharraf himself. And he said in the court that I am not a traitor. To me, a traitor is a person who loots the nation's money and empties the treasury. And then, on the other hand, the ban on former army chief and President Parvez Musharraf who travel abroad by the PMLN government has become the talk of the town. And everybody is questioning about the future of Parvez Musharraf. Some strong rumors are also floating on the national landscape that deal has been done and Pervez Musharraf may travel abroad anytime. Now the peace talks with TTP is also proving a bad patch of our national landscape and situation is going towards a deadlock again because inside TTP there is a divide on extension in ceasefire and war may start again. In this situation there is a big question for the government that what have they been doing since December. To Today we will discuss all the aspects of national scenarios. We will also discuss Afghan presidential elections and Indian elections that are impacting Pakistan in different directions. And we would also like to know that what is the update on Musharraf's case. As you know that in my show, Mr. Zaid Hamid joins me. Assalamu alaikum, Mr. Zaid Hamid. Mr. Zaid Hamid, you know this uh, week's highlight was the treason case on Mr. Parvez Musharraf and uh, this, the special court indicted five counts on Parvez Musharraf which were all denied by uh, Mr. Parvez Musharraf. Let's have a, an, a report on this case and then we will start our discussion. We would like to know your comment. Have charged former military ruler Parvez Musharraf with treason, the first army chief to face such a prosecution. Musharraf was accused of unlawfully suspended the constitution and instituting emergency rule in 2007. The special court has held several hearings since being constituted in November 2013 and its investigations have now culminated in 21st March indictment. He pleaded not guilty and has always claimed that the charges against him are politically motivated. The court also rejected Musharraf's application to leave the country to visit his sick mother in Dubai. Judges rejected his application on the grounds that only the government had the authority to remove him from the list. The judge read out five charges to Musharraf. He pleaded not guilty to each of them but also addressed that the court with a speech about his service to the country and question how he could be called a traitor declaring that he was a patriot Yes, Mr. Zayed Hamid, as you saw Mr. Musharraf appearing in the court in the hearing and then pleading not guilty on all five counts. In fact, he said inside the court that I am not a traitor. For me, traitors are those who loot public money and empty the treasury. I fought three wars and in my time, $17 billion were left in the National Exchequer. But I don't know, this amount came down to 3 or $4 billion now. How did it happen? How do you see this trial? You see, if there is one blunder that would bring down Nawaz Sharif government, that is this particular trial of treason against Parvez Musharraf. It's a false trial. It's a fake trial. It's politically motivated. It's personal vendetta and nothing else. And this needlessly, there was absolutely no need for Nawaz Sharif to commit this suicide. But needlessly, he has pitched himself against the entire armed forces of the country. Parvez Musharraf may have made many blunders as far as decision making is concerned, but definitely he's not a traitor. And calling an ex army chief traitor, especially with the background that he has, of he's been defending Pakistan in 65, 71, multiple wars, he has been spearheading Pakistani armed forces for almost a decade more and with the track record of economic governance and management of his time calling him a traitor is actually making a mockery of the justice and Pakistani armed forces particularly the army is furious at this. I mean they're not angry furious is actually the right word and they are silent but they have so far protected Musharraf because the judiciary and the government have been trying to prosecute him, putting him in handcuffs, put him in jail. They've been trying to do that for the last many months, ever since Musharraf came back from outside. But 
army has been protecting him he has been living in his own rest house in rawalpindi in islamabad then he now he has been shifted to the armed forces medical in uh, medical facility right and Mr. Saad Hamid, one thing he mentioned in his speech inside the court, he said that uh, in my times foreign loans were $37 billion, but now they have skyrocketed to $70 billion. He said, I contained inflation, I fought three wars, and then he also referred to another uh, economical uh, number that he said that national exchequer when he left was three uh, was $17 billion, and now it has come down to 3 or $4 billion. You see, so then, can we look at these figures and say that Musharraf was a better leader for Pakistan? See, one thing, if we compare this to you today's see, one thing you would figures? note, if you compare democracy and dictatorship in Pakistan, if you compare the military rulers and the political rulers in Pakistan, one thing amazing you would note, not a single military ruler has been accused of personal financial corruption. You could disagree with their policies, but they were never involved in personal corruption. A man who is a traitor would always accumulate wealth, would always embezzle the national exchequer, man would always loot and plunder the country. Ayub Khan, not a single allegation of personal corruption on him. General Ziaul Haq, not a single allegation of personal financial corruption on him. And despite all the blunders, not a single allegation of personal financial corruption on Pervez Musharraf. And all political leaders have been notoriously, ruthlessly corrupt to that extent that when the Pakistani President Asif Ali Zardari shook hands with the British Prime Minister, the headline in the British newspaper was that Mr. Prime Minister... And so this is the reputation of the of the politicians. Hundreds of cases of corruption are against every political leader of this country, while Parvez Musharraf has no case of financial corruption against him. So what we are saying here is, okay, for, for somebody to qualify as traitor, I agree with Musharraf here, somebody who embezzled the national wealth, somebody who destroyed the country catastrophically through financial corruption and hemorrhage, should also be graded as a traitor. But Musharraf is to be held responsible himself. He signed the NRO, the National Reconciliation Ordinance, which brought about all these traitors into power. If Musharraf has to be put on trial, he should be put on trial for signing the NRO, for which he has already apologized to the nation, accepting that that was his blunder. Because that NRO brought in Zardari. That NRO brought in Nawaz Sharif. So, and if you actually want justice in this country, then put Nawaz Sharif and Zardari also on trial for embezzlement, for corruption, for writing the memo, which was treason. The memo was actually the treason which the president of Pakistan of the time, Asif Ali Zardari, and Hussein Akani, the ambassador, who wrote, and Supreme Court let them go. And Nawaz Sharif today, when he's doing the selective targeting assassination of a former dictator trying, or a military ruler, trying to settle his personal vendetta, which is now proven from other sources also. I mean, I would like to mention here, there's the, there's the press conference done by British lawyers recently in which they have openly accused Nawaz Sharif government of, and they have also acknowledged that they have received leaked documents from very top sources within the Prime Minister's office where it is confirmed that Nawaz Sharif is actually influencing the judges to get a decision or a judgment or a conviction of Musharraf of his personal choice. We have the clip of that press conference that you have just mentioned, Mr. Zayed Hamid here. Let's have a look at that clip for that what are uh, people and the experts, legal experts at the international level saying about this treason case happening in Pakistan. Let's have a look at that first. This communication that comes directly from a source within the office of the Prime Minister demonstrates the highest level of interference with this process. It sets out 14 separate acts that took place between the 18th and 19th of November that preceded the formation of the Special Tribunal and goes directly to whether this process can be considered independent and impartial. There will of course have to be a full investigation into, into this particular conduct and any other conduct that, that subsequently comes to light. The disclosure that we have demonstrates and, and supports the allegations that we have already submitted to the United Nations in terms of the handpicking of judges and the level of executive interference 
with what is supposed to be an independent and impartial process. For that reason, we are calling for the treason trial to be suspended now, pending a full inquiry, a full international inquiry. Yes, Mr. Zayed Hamid, this press conference was uh, from Bedford Row International. It happened last week in London. And according to them, they're saying that there's a leaked secret communication from the Pakistani Prime Minister's office indicating an unlawful collusion between the Pakistani government and elements of the judiciary to fix and manipulate the trial. How true is all this? See, this is an extremely damning allegation against Nawaz Sharif. And if true, his head could roll on this. And the fact is that Nawaz Sharif has not taken any action against these lawyers. These are international lawyers and they are speaking with all the responsibility on their shoulders. And they have put a very damning allegation on Nawaz Sharif and his government that they are manipulating the trial. They, they have leaked documents and information and perhaps conversations also between Nawaz Sharif's office and the judges and the judiciary. And again, this puts a huge question mark on the entire character of the judiciary as well. So as we said, this one particular allegation which must be investigated now as demanded by them and the whole Pakistani nation must also demand either if these allegations are true then Nawaz Sharif should be hanged for it and if these allegations are not true these lawyers should be hanged for it but this investigation must be done the, what leaked documents have come out what leaked conversation has come out what evidence has come Those out evidences should be that observed. evidence should be brought and a, and a tribunal should be formed in independent inquiry must be done to identify the culprits who are manipulating this trial deliberately to create an anarchy and chaos in the country and they're all based in the prime minister's office of course the prime minister himself leads that so then then the interior ministry has rejected Pervez Musharraf's application to take out his name from the exit control list is it been denied by interior ministry or is it prime minister see, again, uh, Nawaz Sharif as himself we say, Nawaz Sharif is doing blunders after blunders marching straight towards the gallows. I mean, there's no pers I have personally no doubt about it. When the trial court had, ex when Musharraf had appeared in front of the trial court, he had received the indictment, there was an opportunity. The trial court did not object to Parvez Musharraf's leaving the country. And, but he passed the buck to the government saying the government would decide. That moment, the government had an opportunity of showing magnanimity, saying, no, we allow Musharraf to leave the country to see his ailing mother. And in that way, the whole temperature could have been calmed down. The, the, the dispute, the conflict, the clash between institutions would have calmed down considerably. And the ultimate beneficiary would have been Nawaz Sharif himself. But again, but now it's been but rejected. again, he decided to enter the minefield. He rejected Musharraf's plea to leave the country. The petition has now been filed into the Supreme Court, again in front of the judiciary, whose own character is now tainted. After these allegations, the judiciary and the executive are now colluding together to, to make sure that they put Musharraf on trial and convict him. So entire character of judiciary and the government is in doubt now. And any application filed in front of the judiciary would also be seen as tainted, as doubtful. But then, uh, Mr. Zaid Hamid, from day one, the lawyers of Musharraf has been saying that the bench, the special court, has been uh, biased and uh, the allegations came up forward, but nothing has happened. And and the same you bench see, that's is back what again. Saying. Now, the, after this new disclosure by this British legal group, the entire scenario changes because this is for the first time that an international group has said they have credible evidence from the office of the Prime Minister. And this is something that must be investigated. Mr. Zadham, I'm going to have to take a break here. Viewers, we'll be right back after a short break. Welcome back. We are, so we are talking on uh, Pervez Musharraf's case. Now, government has rejected to take out Musharraf's name from ECL. We would like to know what is going to happen next. There are some rumors that deal has been done. And soon Musharraf will go abroad. If so, then why government is practicing this trial? What is a reasonable solution of Musharraf's case in our opinion? Or in, in anybody's opinion, we would like to know. Mr. Zayed Hamid, before going on a break, we showed the conference that happened last week. And it was done by the International Lawyers Agency. And they're saying 
saying they're claiming claiming that they have some very relevant evidences of some uh, tapes that has been leaked out from government's office in which they are trying to manipulate the judiciary in Musharraf's case. Now, there's another question that's raising here that all the political parties in the National Assembly, other than MQM, has agreed to reject Musharraf's plea to take out his name from the exit control list. And they have claimed that it's a golden day. They have claimed this all this as a golden day in the democratic history of country and proof of supremacy of law. How do you see all this? They are the entire, all the leadership of the political parties are one of the most ruthlessly corrupt band of gangsters that this country has ever seen. And these people are venomously anti-Pakistan, anti-armed forces, anti-ideology of Pakistan. And now they are settling scores with the army. But don't you agree with the supremacy of law that is prevailing now? There is no law in the country. The law minister is actually a superfluous job. There is no judiciary in the country. There's no justice in the country at the moment. And from coming from these rascals, literally, that who are all beneficiaries of national reconciliation ordinance with hundreds of thousands of hundreds of billions of dollars worth of corruption cases against all of them, talking of rule of law is, is farcical, is, is ludicrous. And the point is, each one of them, the, all the political parties in Karachi are involved in murder, terrorism, arson. The anarchy that you see in Karachi today is being led by the political coalition of the city, of the province. And then the talk of rule of law. All these parties have, have spent billions in, in, in corruption, embezzled, robbed the National Exchequer. And as Musharraf was saying when he left it for $17 billion that he left in the National Exchequer. And within seven, eight years, they are down to $3 billion. And, and, and the loans that for the country had about $37 billion. $17 something. billion, yeah. Now and it's now down up to almost $70 four. billion. Dollars. Yes, now, yes. this kind of robbery has been done in the democratic era in the last six years. And he also mentioned in his speech in the court that in his time, rate of development remained higher in Balochistan than in all the other provinces. You see, the fact is, the fact is there is absolutely no doubt that the de democratic era that we have seen in the last six years has been the most corrupt, disastrous era that country has ever seen in its entire history. The democracy has destroyed Pakistan. The democracy has sent Pakistan to dogs, literally. And now we face an existential threat, fighting for our own survival, with empty coffers, no law and order in the country, the collapsed judiciary, institutions fighting amongst each other, and the terrorists calling the shot. The terrorists are actually controlling and manipulating the state. And the state is actually bending down to appease the terrorism. Terrorists. Now, this is the state we are in now. And this is the gift of democracy. First Zardari, and now Nawaz Sharif. And they have the audacity to accuse Musharraf or the government before him of bringing Pakistan to the state. Musharraf has done terrible blunders. There's no doubt about it. And Musharraf has harmed Pakistan in so many ways as well. But he is not a traitor. And the fact of the matter is, if you want to hang him, I will support you. Hang him. But hang Zardari and Nawaz Sharif, Altaf Hussain, Asfandiyar Wali, wear them. Hanging him, a targeted assassination of Musharraf alone, would be resisted by the patriots, by the armed forces. Mr. Zayed Hamid, let's see what does some politicians have to say about this case and the lawyer of Musharraf himself, and then I would like to get your comment on that. हमारा आज शिक्का ये लगा है कि शेख अकरम ने ये कह दिया कि ये गद्दारी नहीं बनती जो कि मेरा बॉक्सर का शुरू से शेख अकरम ने किसकी वजह से कहा है क्यों कहा है लेकिन उसे आज कहा है कि गद्दारी नहीं ये कानून शिकनी है तो ये हमारी बहुत बड़ी कामयाबी है और पता है वो हम देखेंगे देखें ये 2020 स्टैंड अप होते हैं और जाके अदालत में पहुंच जाते हैं ये पहला मरीज है अनोखा मरीज आईसीयू में लेटा हुआ है और अदालत में भी चला जाता है अपने पांव पे चल के तो ये ड्रामेबाजी जो है मुशर्रफ साहब बंद करें अब वो मर्द के बच्चे बने जरा मर्द बने मर्द और और पार्लियामेंट को मुक्के दिखाने वाला और यहां पार्लियामेंट हाउस के सामने खड़ा होकर कौम को मुक्के दिखाने वाला और चीफ जस्टिस साहब के कराची जाने पर इफ्तिखार चौधरी साहब के तो कराची को खून में नहलात देने का हुक्म देने वाला जो बदतरीन डिक्टेटर था वो किस समूह से कहता गया वो गद्दार नहीं है अगर उन्हें पाकिस्तान से बाहर जाना है तो उनके पाकिस्तान से बाहर जाने का रास्ता अदालत से होके गुजरता है हुकूमत से होके नहीं गुजरता हमें नहीं मालूम कि परवेज मुशर्रफ साहब के मुकदमे का इख्तिताम और अंजाम क्या होगा वो ऑनरेबल कोर्ट ने करना है हमने नहीं करना लेकिन आप मुझे एक बात बताइए 
اگر جنرل مشرف کو جانے دیا جائے اور کل آنریبل کورٹ ان کو طلب کرے تو انہیں پروڈیوس کرنا کس کی ذمہ داری ہوگی فیڈل گورنمنٹ کی تو ہم انہیں کہاں میں بہت عرصے سے کہہ رہا ہوں اس کا انٹرائل منطقی انجام تک پہنچے گا کوئی دلچسپ فوجیوں میں اس نے اپنی وقار اور ساکھ میں بہت عرصے سے کہہ رہا ہوں اس کا انٹرائل منطقی انجام تک پہنچے گا کوئی دلچسپی نہیں لے رہی فوج اس کے معاملے میں کیونکہ فوج فوجیوں میں اس نے اپنی وقار اور ساکھ کو گوایا ہے پناہ لے کر اور ذرا بزدلی دکھا کر Yes, Mr. Zayed Hamid, uh, let's start with Etazaz Ahsan. He's saying that army will not stand by Pervez Musharraf. Etazaz Ahsan has already been proven wrong. He has made a joke of himself. He is the man who brought Musharraf down, who led the most controversial movement in Pakistan's history, supported the most corrupt, incompetent judicial movement in Pakistani history. And he is himself an extremely controversial man. And he is venomously anti-army and anti-Pakistan. So if, if he gives the comments, like politicians which were giving earlier comments that Musharraf, the path to Musharraf's freedom goes through the judiciary, goes through, goes through the court. Through the court, These are all empty, the government. empty, empty hollow words. Because the fact of the matter is we know that judiciary is being manipulated by the executive as which the press conference of the British lawyers that you heard had categorically said that they have and credible evidence to prove that. And then Sadrafiq is saying that what if the court lets Musharraf go and mm. then when he has to... Also, the Pakistan ambassador to the United States, the man who wrote the memo, the treacherous memo to destroy Pakistan, to get Pakistan attacked by the United States, the man who... who, who his godfather, Asif Ali Zardari, who organized that entire plan to write that memo against the Pakistani armed forces. Why isn't he saying all this about memo scandal also, which was actually treason approved and acknowledged by the Supreme Court itself. But Supreme Court allowed those traitors to leave the country. And now the government is not pursuing the trial. Government is not asking them to come back. The point is, all the statements that the politicians and these lawyers are given, giving, except of course the defense lawyer of the the Ahmed Reza Kasuri except exactly I would like to know he said that Akram Sheikh said it's not the treason case it's the case of abrogation of constitution you see again the government the government legal team is facing great crisis within themselves because they know it's not a treason trial they've been justifying a false case trying to make it look like a treason trial and finally one of them the prosecutor came out saying yes it's not a treason trial but of breaking but of of abrogation of law and that makes it a normal criminal trial in which the high treason punishment... And Ahmed Zakasuri is saying that it's a, it's a winning situation for us. It's, it's a major a victory step. for the Musharraf defense team. There's no doubt about this. But again, you see, with Etazaz Ahsan was saying that army is not backing up Musharraf. Again, it's a farcical, ludicrous statement. Army has been protecting Musharraf. That's why Musharraf is not in jail today. Because when the, all the entire power of the government and the judiciary is trying to drag him to the court and to the jail, and he's still comfortable in his rest house or in the army hospital, who is backing him up? Is the lawyers of the Musharraf strong enough to defend him against the judiciary and the government? Or the army? And the fact of the matter is, army has taken a very solid policy decision. They will not let Musharraf be humiliated. Because if they do that, that would set a dangerous precedent that every corrupt politician or judge would rise to settle the scores with the army. The, the, conf the clash between the institutions in Pakistan is right now touching the red-hot levels. And if this clash continues, and as I said, Nawaz Sharif has decided to walk into the minefield once again, when he had the opportunity of calming the tempest down, he has made a blunder again, and as I see it, it may very well end up in his head rolling, not Musharraf's. Because if this allegation by the British legal firm, legal group, that they have credible evidence of Musharraf and conversations and tapes and documents of Nawaz Sharif influencing the judiciary, then that destroys Nawaz Sharif as well, as well as the judiciary, and army wins, Musharraf wins in this situation. Mr. Zayed Hamid, this was one highlight of this week, uh, of this week uh, regarding the Musharraf's case. Now, the other highlight of this week was the peace talk process in which the TTP factions are divided over the ceasefire extension. In fact, TTP Mohammed Agency Umar Khurasani said that his sector would not extend ceasefire and he has threatened to launch attacks against government. Before we start our discussion on this topic, we would like to have a look at the report, get updated, and then we would continue our conversation. Tariq Taliban Pakistan commander in Mohammed Agency Khalid Omar Khurasani has said that TTP has not announced an extension in the ceasefire and that the war will start again. Khalid Khurasani claimed that 
the government had breached it promise during the period of ceasefire and held the state military and political parties responsible for the losses suffered he said all the influential sections of the society are in favor of the persistence of war according to central spokesman of ttp shahidullah shahid some taliban leaders had objected to extended the ceasefire which lasted during the month of march no decision has been made regarding extension and ceasefire he said shahidullah accused the government of arresting more than 120 TTP militants and not accepting any of their demands during the month of long ceasefire. A member of Taliban political shura Azam Tariq has said that the statements of Shahidullah Shahid and Khalid Khurasani do not reflect the stance of banned outfit TTP. Yes, Mr. Zayed Hamid. So in this peace talk process, now TTP is divided within regarding the decision of extension in the ceasefire. How do you see this going? And now they're threatening that they will start attacking again. You see, they were never divided. We had said this earlier also, it's a ploy. One group of them would keep on engaging the government to gain time, to give the perception that they want peace, they want to buy <coughs> time, to regroup, reorganize. And the second group would declare war, continue to wage war against the state of Pakistan. And this is another case which is going to blow up in the face of Nawaz Sharif government. Because again, here also, a clash had been building up between the army and the political government. Because in January, when there was massive bloodshed going on in the country, army struck at the terrorists, broke their back, destroyed the, the weapons caches, killed their commanders, and forced the terrorists to flee. And they came back begging for peace talks. Even at that time, army had requested the government not to cease fire, not to stop the army from going after these militants who were holed up, rounded up in certain pockets of the tribal areas. Government forced the army to fall back and that allowed the terrorists to regrow. Army struck them again after a month when the bloody campaign did not stop. And then this third final round of peace talks began. At that time we had told very clearly that this is only a ploy. But once the summer season begins, once the spring season begins to come and snow starts to melt on the mountains, when the supplies of the terrorists would, would be would resupplied from Afghanistan, when they would get fresh cadre, when they'll reorganize and regroup and re able to relaunch themselves, the war will begin again. And now but it's going Mr. to happen Zayed Hamid, let me let me, uh, let me tell you, let me ask you this, this aspect of TTP. They're saying that uh, instead of benefiting, uh, instead of TTP benefiting from the ceasefire, government had benefited from the ceasefire and they have sent its security forces to new positions in tribal areas which would have been difficult for these forces in normal days. You see, both militants, both fighting sides, the army and the militants. The have army is also regrouping and reorganizing. See, the point and is, army this was not frame. conducting any operations against them, but definitely army was reorganizing itself because within the military circles, the intelligence which they had, the chatter that they captured from the conversation, the information that they gathered from the informers was clear that TTP is reorganizing, regrouping, rearming, and they're going to relaunch. And army was preparing itself for it while allowing the government to to attempt a peace deal. Mr. Zahid I have to take a break here and we can continue our discussion on the same topic once we are back from the break. We will stay with us. We'll be right back after a short break. Welcome back, viewers. We are talking over the peace talk process in which TTP seems divided over the ceasefire extension decision. Khalid Umar Khurasani said that the TTP has not announced an extension in the ceasefire and that the war will start again. In this situation, why government is insisting for peace talks? What would be the future of these peace talks and what options government have now? Mr. Zayed Hamid, before going on a break, we came up with another perspective from TTP as according to them, they're saying that from this ceasefire, government government has benefited more than them and they have uh, sent their security forces into the areas where in normal days these forces would not have made access and then they also said that instead of freeing our prisoners they violated ceasefire and arrested our 10120 people during raids in Doaba and Hangu districts so who's benefiting from the ceasefire you see there is absolutely no doubt the TTP are compulsive liar they are terrorist organization they are cutthroats they have no value they have nothing sacred for them and trusting their word would be insanity 
and the fact of the matter is that TTP has reorganized itself. They have their credible news appearing in the press also, also and also available with the intelligence agencies that Mullah Fazlullah, the head of the TTP, has ordered a massive revamping of the intelligence network of TTP called the Khorasan Brigade because after the strikes of the Pakistan Air Force and the Pakistan Army on their hideouts earlier this year, they suffered heavy casualties and the information which was with the Pakistani Air Force and the Army was so accurate that TTP was bewildered. They were shocked actually at the level of precision strikes which were done against them and they fear that there are informers within their rank and there are indeed informers within their ranks planted by the Pakistani intelligence agencies and the armed forces. So now TTP has decided to ignite, re reorganize its own intelligence network called the Khorasan Brigade. So they have been organizing all along. They took the peace deal was only a ploy to gain time to reorganize the intelligence network, to regroup, rearm, bring a new fresh cadre, re reposition themselves and relaunch. And within weeks now we feel as the summer season begins, we know that TTP is going to start the war again. The bloodshed, suicide bombings, attacks would begin. And now I hold Nawaz Sharif responsible for this bloodshed. Nawaz Sharif, Imran Khan, Samuel Haq and Fazlur Rahman and all those who supported these peace talks. Those idiots who could not see that TTP and insane animals cannot be tamed through peace talks and only gaining time after the deadly strikes by the Pakistani Air Force, they were trying to regroup and reorganize. All murder cases, all pers every person killed in the country after, from the attacks of TTP, their murder cases should be registered not just against the TTP, also against the political leadership which delayed the army operation against them when they were cornered and surrounded and could have been eliminated. Mr. Zad Hamid, let's see what is Irfan Siddiqui has to say on the recent progress of this peace talk and then what Rahman Malik has to say about Salman Tasir's son. Let's have a look at that first. When the conversations are happening, when there is a meeting, when there is a meeting, they don't say anything. वो ऐसे ही होता है कि गाड़ी आगे बढ़ रही होती है लेकिन वो शायद बहुत से लोगों को दिखाई नहीं दे रहे होती जब देखिए पहली कमेटी गुफ्तगु कर रही थी तो उस वक्त भी एक तातुल का वक्फा आ गया था और उस तातुल के वक्फे के फौरन बाद तालिबान ने ऐलान कर दिया था जंग बंदी का तो कहीं ना कहीं गाड़ी चल रही होती है बढ़ रही होती है इस वक्त भी तातुल नहीं है मेरा ख्याल ये है कि तालिबान खुद भी तालिबान की तश्ल करदा कमेटी भी और हुकूमत की तश्ल करदा कमेटी भी बड़े एक्टिवली इस पर काम कर रहे हैं कुछ जो चीज़ें कैदियों के तबादले के हवाले से सामने आई हैं उनकी तरफ से उन पर गौर व खौज हो रहा है उनकी तहकीक हो रही है और बहुत जल्द उसमें जो जो तातुल का तसर मिल रहा है वो इनशाला दूर हो जाएगा बुनियादी बात यह है कि हुकूमत अमन की ख्वाहिश में बड़ी संजीदा है अच्छा और, और उसमें उसमें किसी को कोई शायबा नहीं होना चाहिए नशेबो फराज आए भी तो वो ख्वाहिश और वो आजम अपनी जगह मौजूद है एक क्रिमिनल अगर स्टेट के लेवल पे होगा तो वैसे ही मुतालबात होंगे मैं तो सिर्फ डिमांड ये करता हूँ हुकूमत से भी और तालिबान से भी कि आप तीनों को प्रोफेसर अजमल को भी और सलमान तसीर के साहबजादे जो शहबाज तसीर है और प्राइम मिनिस्टर गिलानी के बेटे जो है अली गिलानी उनको वीडियो दिखाए उनकी वो जिंदा है कैसे इतबार किया जा सकता है कि जो वो बात करें वो ठीक है कहीं ऐसा तो नहीं है कि इसमें मजाक के अमल में अपना टाइम पास देने के लिए गेन करने के लिए वो अपने आप को दोबारा इनर्जाइज करके अपनी पोजीशन एक प्लेस कर रहे हैं Yes, Mr. Zaid Hamid, you heard it from Siddiqui that the peace talk process has not been abandoned. It is proceeding. And then Rahman Malik saying that Professor Ajmal, Shahbaz Tasir and Ali Gilani, the proofs of their death should be shown. See, the fact is that Irfan Siddiqui represents the government and he lives in the fool's paradise, speaking the same nonsense which the Prime Minister always speaks as far as the peace terms are concerned. Saying that... that Prime the Minister said that they will be giving uh, the nation some good news pretty soon. What they are... What they are doing now is they're releasing the cutthroat terrorists. They are succumbing to the demands of the terrorists. They're releasing every terrorist and criminal and traitor that they have. And TTP is demanding their release and government is constantly releasing them while the TTP has not given anything in return. While Rahman Malik, the former interior minister in the People's Party government, now he's saying that, he, that TTP should give proof that the son of the former prime minister, son of the former governor, and a vice chancellor of the Peshawar University are alive. The fact is, it was the People's Party under, t under whose tenure the TTP actually rose to power. The most incompetent interior minister that we ever had in our history was Rahman Malik. All the bloodshed that you see in the country is on his hands. He did not, neither his government, neither his parliament, neither his ministry, 
did anything to control the terrorism and the violence in the country and now they are coming home to roost his prime minister's son is kidnapped by the ttp his governor's son is kidnapped by the ttp his vice chancellor's son is kidnapped by the ttp and now the threats to bilawal's life also his their chairman is also under threat from the same terrorist gangs whom they have been sheltering and protecting while they were in power serves them right if i would say that it seems brutal but serves them right because but they're saying of, that they will blame the punjab government thousands of pakistanis have Bilawal. died because of the incompetence of the people's party government and now the sons of their top leadership is in the custody of those cutthroat terrorists and most probably they're not alive also now he's demanding their proof of their life whether they are alive or not the fact of the matter is the all, now the, the the ghost of terrorism is coming to haunt the people's party which people's party which spent their time looting and plundering the country and under their watch hundreds of thousands of pakistanis were killed or wounded by those animals which were backed by the cia and raw serve them right i would say it again seems cruel but they deserve it Mr. Zaid Hamid, uh, there is another development regarding PTI that happened this week in which several MNAs and MPAs of PTI, they have formed formally a uh, like -minded. result of that, now they have formally made this like-minded group of PTI. How do you see PTI's future? Is the bubble is bursting of PTI now just after 10 months? You see, we knew about the PTI's future. We knew they would never come into power. We knew they would never be able to fulfill any promise that they have made to the nation. we knew it was just a euphoria of youth and we knew that they are going to fall apart and this is exactly what's happening in the last 10 months a major block has emerged within the pti as you were just mentioning a forward block of the mnas and mpas of pti who are basically it means there is a rebellion within the pti they're saying that the goal of this movement or like minded group is to get rid of the people who have hijacked pti and uh, from the real and ideological workers and it's not the manifesto and ideology of imran khan that has been implemented in kpk see the point is imran khan is still the chairman if the ideology of imran is not being implemented then whose ideology is being implemented they should mention that also the fact of the matter is that pti is falling apart on all fours they have crashed on every count they have not been able to finish corruption they have not been able to finish the the the, the police station culture or or the corruption culture that they said they had they have we have in the country and their stance on all major national issues whether it is war against the terror whether it is the trial of parvez musharraf whether it is the economic collapse whether it is the war in afghanistan whether it is it's all been impulsive emotional childish very rational and completely devoid of any reality and substance yes. mr zaid ahmed we would like to see the report and the names of how many mnas and mpas are included in this like minded group how many have joined them let's have a look at that report also 14 members of pakistan tehreek insaf in kpk assembly has raised a banner of revolt against policies of their own government in the province and formed a separate function qurban ali khan the self declared focal person of the group has said the incapable people had been inducted into the cabinet and accused them of being involved in irregularities some people are trying to hijack the vision of chairman imran khan he said he swearly criticized the policies of kpk government and said the party chief had been kept in dark and he might not be aware of wrongdoing of provincial leaders member of the block claim that they are not agitating for power and position qurban ali said the disgruntled lawmakers did not want to form a forward block or join the opposition a member of block alleged that important portfolios and positions had been given to in efficient and dishonest people So Mr Zaid Hamid what does this show that the third ra raising force political force is under crisis due to its own internal conflicts You see when these elections took place the entire the educated class of the country the youth they hoped that Imran might emerge as the third force compared to Bilawal and Zardaris and Nawaz Sharif and um, and might lead the country to a better future the tsunami might swamp the country for better but now all the hopes have crashed and the reality the harsh reality has dawned on the country that democracy is not for pakistan in these present times when entire political leadership is either corrupt incompetent or influenced by foreign hostile powers and ultimately the whole system as we are seeing is crashing down and it will all come down to the solution that we had given before the elections do not hold elections bring about patriotic technocratic government 
of very hard working honest technocrats people who can who can impose an emergency in the country a war emergency education economic law and order financial and bring the country on its feet again what has happened is that this democracy has destroyed pakistan so brutally that now the entire edifice of the state is collapsing nobody can recover it no political party has the potential neither standing alone or in a jo or together in a coalition they have the potential to bring pakistan back on its feet the system is collapsing the, it has that collapsed means, already that means that will uh, will pervez khatak be overthrown in kpk it doesn't matter the point is even perhaps i feel even before pervez khatak in kpk nawaz sharif may be overthrown in the center see the anarchy in baluchistan see the chaos and bloodshed on the streets of karachi and every province is being run by different political party and they're all together in the center and what have they given to this country hunger death law and order law and order chaos violence bloodshed what mr zaid ahmed this was the story of one political party of pakistan pti there's another political party pakistan people's party have just uh, they just uh, had the death anniversary of their leader zulfikar ali bhutto how do you see people's party uh, performing in sindh what's their future like they have no future in sindh as well but unfortunately they keep on getting votes if you go through the system if you go through the elections people's party will keep on winning why because there are three forces in sindh right now one are the mqm and all the sindhis do not vote for the mqm and the other forces are separatist subnationalists who are direct who are violent forces of Sin sindhu desh the people who want to create sindh as a separate country and again the sindhi people do not want to vote for them so what choice is left to the sindhi people they have no choice but to vote for people's party and unfortunately if they and the same corrupt lot keep coming back keep churning back again and again and again and that's why we are saying after what zardari did to this country he has no future so he's been pushing bilawal his son into power into power politics but once they had a synth festival trying to project the character and personality of zardari simultaneously they had a disaster in thar where a drought took place and the entire synth was in was, was dying of hunger while Zar, while bilawal was singing songs for, on 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 festivals so basically the pr has been a disaster and right now the in, the people of sindh as well are totally disgruntled of people's party they are disgruntled of mqm there's the bloodshed in karachi the chaos and anarchy and drought in interior of sindh the law and order crisis in sindh and the chaos that you see in rest of the country is being reflected in sindh as well and Mr. that's Zahar why Hamid, we are we're, saying we are we are out of time uh, i'm sorry to interrupt you but we are out of time we could not touch base on the international affairs in our this show we will try to uh, catch them up in our next show we are as you saw that we try to discuss the developments of this week in which the musharraf case is the highlight and then the uh, taliban's peace talk is the highlight and then uh, at the same time we see one political party just 10 months old who's going through the crisis internal crisis and then we see another political party that is probably decades old still not being able to perform in the other province let's hope that some political party can rise from their personal interest and be able to perform for the country that's it for tonight see you all next sunday until then allah hafiz and good night